As we reach the very end of the garlic harvesting season, this video is a prelude to the next step, which is the next garlic growing season. I've done an amazing collaboration with Sean from Living Seeds. He is South Africa's leading seed guru, and he is going to show you what it is that you need to do to get successful garlic, but also, very importantly, how garlic grows the various cycles it goes through, understanding what needs a garlic plant needs during each cycle, so that when your garlics are ready to harvest, like this one, you can get big, beautiful bulbs every single time. So right now, we're gonna head over to Sean from Living Seeds on the Living Seeds farm. He's gonna get, share a wealth of knowledge and information with us and I hope you get an immense amount of value out of this because Sean is an absolute vessel of knowledge. So grab some coffee, tea, whatever, sit back and enjoy. One of the things that Living Seeds is known for is our annual supply of heirloom garlic. And we do about 30 different types of garlic on Living Seeds Farm. And um, it's, it's one of the most important crops for us. And we spend a lot of time and effort growing our garlic correctly. Now, I know that I've put out a couple of videos on how to grow garlic. Craig's put out a couple of videos on how to grow garlic. Everybody. There are a lot of garlic, how to grow garlic videos. And I think what one needs to understand is that garlic growing in, or how to grow garlic in the Northern Hemisphere and how to grow garlic in the Southern Hemisphere is completely different. Um, we use different methods. We use similar methods, but our timing is completely different. Um, and the way that they grow garlic, where it, it's, it's, it's planted, it goes dormant under, under snow and the snow covers the fields and, and the garlic is nice and cold. Or alternatively, they actually plant the garlic very early in spring. Now, we can't grow garlic like that. In, in, in the southern hemisphere, there's a specific garlic growing window, and that window is from the middle of February up until about the middle of April. If you're in the Western Cape, you can probably go to about the middle of May. Um, and it's a case of you need to understand what garlic needs to grow and how it grows to, to, to actually grow garlic exceptionally well. Those of you that um, subscribe to Living Seeds know that we are very big on green manures, on cover crops. This is an example of our winter cover crop. It's only a short section over here and the reason why we do this is that the garlic variety that's planted ahead um, of this cover crop, we, we finished planting over here and this was Wenger's Red Russian. The balance of the row, we just fill up with a cover crop so that nobody makes a mistake and they harvest this entire row, changed the variety and the sign's gone missing. So this is the end of the row and we just fill it up with our winter cover crop. The winter cover crop gets planted on every single bed that doesn't have a crop growing in um, over winter. It's an 11 way mix. So we've got mustards, we've got, um, we've got kales over here, that is vetch. Um, over here we've got peas, this is peas growing over here, um, there's, there's kale growing here, there's Swiss chard, um, there's, there's rye, there's wheat, I can't see that at the moment, um, but this is an 11 way cover crop mix. And all it does is it keeps living roots inside the soil um, to keep the soil um, our soil life active and it's the living roots that keeps your soil alive so this is just one of the things that I wanted to show you guys and it was um, a unique opportunity because we had a row that we actually didn't finish planting garlic in or we stopped um, sort of right at the end of the row I think there's a quarter of the row left over here and you'll see all of the rows 
if, if, um, if we just pan, you'll see there's a couple of places on the farm where we have a row of, of cover crop and that just indicates that um, we stopped or we ran out of garlic for that specific planting. Planting garlic in the southern hemisphere is, is slightly different to planting garlic in the northern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere has a very specific garlic planting window and that window you need to adhere to the garlic planting window to make sure that you have the best possible crop. So what you're looking at is you're looking to plant your garlic in, in late summer, um, early autumn. You want the garlic to, to go into the ground while the ground is cooling down. Garlic really enjoys cool soil and that cool soil is what helps to stimulate your garlic's growth. So the garlic growth is um, it's predicated entirely on, on the soil temperature and the air temperature. The most important factor for, for growing garlic is the soil temperature. You want to make sure that the soil is, is, is nice and cool. You'll see that we spend a lot of time mulching our garlic. What the mulching does is the mulching um, creates a nice blanket. It helps to insulate the soil. So it keeps, it keeps the soil temperature nice and cool in winter. And then what it does is when it heats up in spring, it keeps the, the soil temperature nice and cool to ensure maximum bulb growth. So when you receive your garlic, your garlic is going to be a bulb like this. Um, one of the interesting things is you'll see that our garlic has, has roots on the bottom of the garlic. It's, it's one of the ways to tell if you have an imported garlic or a local garlic. Imported garlic, what they do is they actually remove all of these roots over here and you have a clear basal plate on the garlic head. Um, local garlic, typically local garlic, I don't know any of local garlic suppliers that actually clean the roots off their local garlic. So it's one of the indicators, if you just pick up a garlic in the shop, if you flip it over, you have a look, if there's roots, it's a local garlic. If there's a clear basal plate, it's been imported. It's one of the import requirements. So how to plant your garlic? As you can see, all of our garlic has been planted um, and it's, it's a little bit late to show you how to plant garlic now. So I'm just going to tell you how to plant the garlic. So what you want to do is you want to take your head, you want to break the garlic cloves off the head like this. So I'm just going to put this down. Okay, so you don't have to rub them like that. I just, I'm just rubbing it to remove all of the fluff for you. So if you look at your garlic clove, there's a sharp point at the top. This is the top of the clove and there's a little flat plate. This is part of the basal plate of the garlic. So let's try that again. So here's your sharp point of the garlic over here and here's your flat basal plate at the bottom. So when you plant your garlic you want to plant it approximately three times deeper than this garlic clove is long and it's approximate. So you're looking at a, plant, a planting depth of about this much. Um, and the way that we do it, we have a, a garden fork, we push the garden fork into the ground, we actually have a garden fork that, that only has two tines that have been cut short and we take that fork and we just push it into the ground, wiggle a hole and we drop the garlic into it. Done. Um, and every single garlic clove is planted at that depth. One of the key things that you need to do, and this is why the planting window is so important, is you want as much vegetative growth to happen on top of the garlic as possible before the winter dormancy sets in. Garlic needs to vernalize over winter. Basically, that means that the garlic plant is going to sleep and um, it is preparing itself for spring. The important thing to remember is that the garlic plant will not produce any new leaves in spring. So the leaves that the plant has produced before its winter dormancy are the leaves that you will see in spring. So even if that tiny little leaf has just stopped in uh, just above the garlic bulb underground. If there's a tiny little leaf that started, that leaf will emerge in spring. But the garlic will not produce any new growth in spring. All it will do is it'll, it, it, it will flesh out the existing growth. So you want as much growth as possible to take place 
before the winter dormancy. One of the things that you need to do um, as soon after emergence as possible. So you've planted your garlic, the garlic has just come out of the ground. You want to fertilize this garlic. And the, fert uh, the fertilizer that you want to use is something that is going to promote nice green growth. And that is a high nitrogen fertilizer. So the fertilizer that we recommend is the Talborn Organics Vita Green. It's a nice high nitrogen fertilizer and it'll help stimulate as much green growth as possible. And the green growth um, is, is important, as, as we'll explain, because you want as much growth on the plant as possible before winter sets in. So on Living Seeds Farm, we are huge on mulching. And for garlic, mulching is so important. Uh, it keeps the soil cool. It, it helps suppresses weeds. Garlic does not like competition from weeds. So whatever you do to suppress the growth of weeds is, is really, really important. Uh, for us, it is mulching. So how we mulch on Living Seeds Farm, we mulch with a variety of organic uh, materials. Right now, this over here is, is uh, it's what's called spent mushroom compost. We get mushroom compost from a mushroom farm. They deliver about 60 cubic meters um, of, of, uh, of mushroom compost every week for us. And we just mulch absolutely everything. How we mulch our garlic, and you can see there's a little bit of cardboard sticking out over here. So what we do is we put down four layers of cardboard. Every single time we mulch, we put down cardboard like this, and then that cardboard gets covered with the mulch. Now, this cardboard was covered with a nice thick layer of mulch. The mulch has settled down. We're going to need to top up the mulch again in spring. But this is one of the ways that we will. But the, 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 let me try in my English again. This is one of the ways that we mulch. But let me go and show you another way that we mulch. We use either hay or straw. Um, and we find it more and more difficult to find hay or straw that hasn't been chemically desiccated with glyphosate. I'd love to mulch almost entirely with hay and straw, finding um, hay or straw that hasn't been polluted with, um, with glyphosate is, is, is it's just, it's way too difficult. And we're actually paying a premium for um, non-glyphosate infected hay or straw. So this is another way that we do it. What we do is we take the hay or the straw, we put it on the garlic. In the beds in between over here, we use mushroom compost. And if we dig down, uh, you can see, well, over there, he has the cardboard over here. I can't find any cardboard over here. It's probably because the cardboard is broken down already, which tells me that my soil is going great. Um, cool. So mulch your garlic. It's, it's critically important. You can mulch with hay, you can mulch with straw, especially if you can find it where it hasn't been tainted with glyphosate. You can use mushroom compost. You can use normal compost. Um, you can mulch your garlic with leaves that have fallen down from the trees in autumn. You can, you can basically mulch your garlic with any organic matter. All you want is you want a nice thick layer of mulch on the soil um, to keep the garlic cloves um, cool and to conserve soil moisture and to increase the biological life inside your soil. So the next thing to talk about is what happens in spring. So what is going to happen in spring is that your garlic plant will continue um, its growing process, push out all of the leaves that were produced before the dormant period, and you need to start forming the bulb. The bulb formation happens right at the end, but you need that leaf growth to produce as nice a big fat bulb as you can. So what you need to do in spring is you need to put down a second layer of mulch. So we will go along all of these fields over here and we'll lay down another layer of mulch. It doesn't have to be the same mulch, it can be a completely different mulch, doesn't really matter. Before we put the mulch down, we will fertilize with Talborn Organics um, Vita Grow, the yellow bag 232. We'll put down about 100 grams per running meter, and then we'll put the mulch on top of that fertilizer. The only other thing that you need to do is to make sure that there's a constant moisture. If you don't mulch your garlic, if you, if you leave the garlic bulb um, uncovered or the soil uncovered, what's going to happen is you're not going to get 
um, nice big heads and you won't get nice filled cloves. The formation of the garlic bulb happens right at the end of the season. And it's the very last thing that the garlic plant does is it produces a bulb so that it can perpetuate itself in the following season. But all of the stuff that you've done, the way you've planted it, the way you fertilized, the way you mulched before um, winter, um, adequate soil moisture, no weed pressure, in spring when, when the new growth starts again, or it's not new growth, and you need to understand this, is that the plant won't produce new leaves. It'll only complete the growth of existing leaves. But when that new growth starts coming out, you need to fertilize the plant again, you need to mulch the soil to keep the soil nice and cool, and then it's literally the last um, six weeks before you harvest, that garlic bulb goes and it just, it, it just expands. And the longer you can keep your soil cool and, um, and, and the garlic plant cool, the larger that bulb is going to get before the plant actually dies down. I'm going to show you now what you need to look for in harvesting a garlic plant. This, th th this garlic is nowhere near harvest, but I'm going to show you what you need to look for and um, it'll give you an idea as to how and when to harvest your garlic. So how do you know when to harvest your garlic plants? The, the easiest way to work out when to harvest your garlic plant is you want to look at your field or your planting and if you look at these leaves, so now th there's a whole lot of leaves and if you look inside here there's still leaves that are growing there's another leaf coming out of there. I'm not really going to um, open it up. I don't really want to damage the plant. But if you look at these leaves over here as these leaves, you'll see the first couple of leaves have actually dried out and that's not really a crisis. So you're looking for 50% of the plant. So it's going to be probably around here. 50% of the plant um, is dry on 50% of your crop. When that happens, your garlic plants are basically ready to harvest. Uh, it's an old wives tale that if you break the garlic's neck that it'll dry out faster. Please don't do that. It doesn't work for onions. It doesn't work for garlic. All you're doing is reducing your harvest. Allow the plant to mature um, in the soil correctly and you'll harvest great garlic. Another way to test if your garlic is ready to harvest is if you actually grab the garlic plant and uh, and this is going to be sort of um, late spring early summer and you actually lift the garlic plant and you actually apply pressure you can lift the garlic plant out of the soil there's a, um, a principle called root shear and, and garlic develops root shear when it's ready to be harvested you can actually just pull the garlic plant out of the ground and if you, if you have root shear on about 50% of your plants, it's time to uh, lift all of your plants. So I just want to give Sean a massive, massive shout out for participating in this collab video. If you want to subscribe to his journey and what he's busy doing on the farm and the seed company, Living Seeds, please subscribe to his channel. I am put, putting it in the description below for you. Please support them. They're an amazing seed company. They are continuously bringing in new varieties and their farm is where all the magic happens. So please support local South African seed companies. And if you've got any questions about anything that was said in the video, please drop a comment below. I will definitely get back to you. And if I can't get back to you, I will get Sean from Living Seeds to get back to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it out to your like-minded communities, and please subscribe to my journey so that you can see what's happening when the next garlic season happens and everything else that I'm doing. Until next time, happy growing.